after finishing the fourth year of medical course in the University of Santo Tomas, Jose Rizal, being disgusted with the antiquated method of instruction in this Dominican-owned university and the racial prejudice of Dominican professors, decided to complete his studies in Spain. This is now the birth of Rizal's secret mission, the mission which Rizal conceived with the approval of his older brother Pasiano was to observe keenly the life and culture, languages and customs, industries and commerce, and governments and laws of the European nations in order to prepare himself in the mighty task of liberating his oppressed people from Spanish tyranny. Rizal's departure for Spain was kept secret to avoid detection by the Spanish authorities and the friars. Even his own parents did not know because he knew that, especially his mother, would not allow him to go. Before his secret departure, Jose Rizal wrote a farewell letter for his beloved parents and another one for his sweetheart Lino Rivera, both delivered shortly after he sailed away. On May 3, 1882, Rizal departed on board the Spanish steamer Salvadora bound for Singapore. During the voyage to Singapore, he carefully observed the people and things on board the steamer. There were 16 passengers including himself. He was the only Filipino, the rest were Spaniards, British, and Indian Negros. The ship captain, Donato Lecha, from Asturias, Spain befriended him. On May 9, the Salvadora docked at Singapore, Rizal landed, registered at Hotel de la Paz, and spent two days on a sightseeing tour of the city. In Singapore, Rizal transferred to another ship, the Gemna, a French steamer, which left Singapore for Europe on May 11. It was a larger and cleaner vessel which carried more passengers. Since the steamer is a French steamer, Rizal attempted to converse with his fellow passengers in French, but to his surprise and embarrassment, he found out that what we had learned in Ateneo could not be understood, so that he had to speak in mixed Spanish Latin, supplemented with actions and sketching on paper. On May 17, the Dijemna reached Point Gale a seacoast town in southern Ceylon, which is now named Sri Lanka. Rizal was unimpressed by this town. On his travel diary, he wrote, The general appearance of Point Galle is a picturesque but lonely and quiet and at the same time sad. The following day, the Dejemna weighed anchor resumed the voyage towards Colombo, the capital of Ceylon. He delightfully scribbled in his diary that Colombo is more beautiful, smart and elegant than Singapore, Point Gal and Manila. From Colombo, the Gemna continued the voyage crossing the Indian Ocean to Africa. For the first time, Rizal sighted the barren coast of Africa, which he called inhospitable land but famous. At the next stopover, in Aden, Rizal went ashore to see the sights. He found the city hotter than Manila. He was amused to see the camels, for it was the first time he saw these animals. From Aden, the Dijemna proceeded to the city of Suez, the Red Sea terminal of the Suez Canal. It took the Dijemna five days to traverse the Suez Canal. Rizal was thrilled because it was his first trip through this canal which was built by Ferdinand de Lesseps. It was inaugurated on November 17, 1869. Traversing the Suez Canal, they landed at Port Said. From Port Said, the Dejemna proceeded on its way to Europe. On June 11, Rizal reached Naples. This Italian city pleased him because of its business activity, its lively people, and its panoramic beauty. On the night of June 12, the steamer docked at the French harbor of Marseilles. 
he visited the famous Chateau d'Eau where Dantes, hero of the Count of Monte Cristo, was imprisoned. On the afternoon of June 15, Rizal left Marcellus by train for the last lap of his trip to Spain, and finally reaching his destination, Barcelona, on June 16, 1882. Rizal's first impression of Barcelona, the greatest city of Catalonia and Spain's second largest city, was unfavorable. Later, he changed his bad impression and came to like the city. He found it to be really a great city with an atmosphere of freedom and liberalism and its people were open-hearted, hospitable, and courageous. In Barcelona, Rizal wrote a nationalistic essay entitled Amor Patrio, which means love of country, his first article written on Spain soil. He sent this article to his friend in Manila, Basilio Tidoro Moran, publisher of Diaryong Tagalog, the first Manila bilingual newspaper. Rizal's Amor Patrio, under his pen name Laong Laan, appeared in print in Diaryong Tagalog on August 20, 1882. It was published in two texts, Spanish and Tagalog. The Spanish text was the one originally written by Rizal in Barcelona. The Tagalog text was a Tagalog translation made by Marcelo H. del Pilar. Publisher Basilio Tidoro Moran, deeply impressed by Amor Patrio, congratulated Rizal and requested for more articles. In response to his request, Rizal wrote the second article for Diaryong Tagalog entitled Los Viajes means travels. His third article, entitled Revesta de Madrid or Review of Madrid, which he wrote in Madrid on November 29, 1882, though it was returned to him because the Jaryong Tagalog had ceased publication for lack of funds. On November 3, 1882, Rizal enrolled in the Universidad Central de Madrid in two courses, Medicine and Philosophy and Letters. Aside from his heavy studies in the university, he studied painting and sculpture in the Academy of Fine Arts of San Fernando, took lessons in French, German, and English under private instructors, and practiced fencing and shooting in the whole of Arms of Sans e Carbonel. His thirst for knowledge of music, he visited the art galleries and museums and read books on all subjects under the sun, including military engineering, in order to broaden his cultural background. Rizal led a Spartan life in Madrid. He lived frugally, spending his money on food, clothing, lodging, and books, never wasting a peseta for gambling, wine, and women. His only extravagance was investing a few pesetas for a lottery ticket in every draw of the Madrid lottery. Rizal was not a handsome man. In physique, he was neither dashing nor imposing for he was a shy small man. But he possessed an aura of charisma due to his many splendid talents and noble character which made him attractive to romantic young women. No wonder. The prettier of Don Pablo's daughters, Consuelo, fell in love with him. Rizal, being a lonely young man in a foreign country, was attracted by Consuelo's beauty. He even composed a lovely poem on August 22, 1883, dedicated to her. In this poem titled, A la Senorita, C-O-E-P. C-O-E-P are the abbreviated letters of Consuelo Ortiga y Perez. He expressed his admiration for her. He found solace and joy in her company. However, before his romance with Consuelo could blossom into a serious affair, he suddenly backed out for two reasons. First, he was still engaged to Lino Rivera, and second, his friend, co-worker in the propaganda movement, Eduardo Delete, madly in love with Consuelo, 
and he had no wish to break their friendship because of a pretty girl. In 1882, shortly after his arrival in Madrid, Rizal joined the Circulo Hispano Filipino, a society of Spaniards and Filipinos. Upon the request of the members of this society, he wrote a poem entitled Me Piden Versos, which means They Asked Me for Verses, which he personally declaimed during the New Year's Eve reception of the Madrid Filipinos held in the evening of December 31, 1882. In this sad poem, he poured out the cry of his agonizing heart. This organization aims to express difficulties freely experienced by the Filipinos under the leadership of the Spaniards, except for Serizal, Marcelo H. Del Pilar, Juan Luna, and Graciano Lopez Jaina are the organization members. They published the newspaper Revista del Circulo Hispano Filipino, expressing thoughts on the Spaniards' evil. It is difficult for students to raise funds, so Circulo Hispano Filipino and its magazine did not last long. When Spain allowed the Philippines to engage in international trade, liberal spirits could enter freely from other European countries. These spirits, the Spanish uprising in 1868, the Suez Canal opening in 1869, and the assassination of Gomez, Burgos, and Zamora were among those that aroused the patriotic feelings of the Filipinos. Such events induced Filipino intellectuals to set up an organization called the Propaganda Movement. The following are the members of the Propaganda Movement. Jose Rizal Jose Rizal was born on June 19, 1861 in Calamba, Laguna. As a child, he was endowed with extraordinary intelligence. He studied at the Ateneo de Manila and the University of Santo Tomas. He immigrated to complete the medical course and promote reform in the Philippines through his writings. He wrote the novels Noli Me Tangere and El Filibusterismo, which are said to have sparked the awakening of the patriotic feelings of the Filipinos and also caused him to achieve the desired freedom. He used Laong Laan and the Masalang as symbols of his works. On his second return to the Philippines, he was sentenced to death for alleged sedition and rebellion. He was shot in Bagumbayan on December 30, 1896. Marcelo H. Del Pilar was born on August 30, 1850, to his parents Julian Del Pilar and Biasa Gatmaitan. He graduated in law from the University of Santo Tomas. He founded Jariyong Tagalog and also became the editor of La Solidaridad. He died on July 4, 1896 in Barcelona, Spain. Father Serrano Lactao became his assistant in exacerbating the different passions and catechism that were read by the hurtful jokes of the friars. He graduated with a Bachelor of Philosophy. In addition to being a good lawyer, he inherited his father's writing skills. He also played various musical instruments such as flute, violin, and piano. He also handles Arnis well. He married his cousin Marciana when he worked in his uncle's office as official de Mesa de Pampanga and Quiapo. Graciano Lopez Jaina, known as Prince of Tagalog Speakers. Graciano Lopez Jaina was born on December 18, 1856 in Haro, Iloilo. He went abroad to escape the persecution of the friars because of the writings he wrote against them. In Spain, he founded La Solidaridad the official newspaper of the propaganda movement and was also the first to edit it. He was known as the great orator of the propaganda movement. He died of tuberculosis in Barcelona on January 20, 1896. His mother enrolled him in the Seminario de San Vicente Ferrer. 
After high school, he was named the best in theology in their class. His mother was disappointed when he chose to become a doctor rather than a priest. Thanks to financial assistance from his wealthy relatives, especially to Claudio Lopez, a vice consul of Portugal, went to Manila to study medicine, but he was not accepted by the University of Santo Tomas because he lacked the required degree for a Bachelor of Arts. Therefore, he entered the Hospital of San Juan de Dios as an apprentice. Due to the shortage of money, he returned to Iloilo and practiced his medicine with the little knowledge he learned. Antonio Luna, brother of the great painter Juan Luna, is best known for being general of the Revolutionary Army against the Americans. He graduated pharmacist at the University of Santo Tomas and finished his doctor's degree at the University Central de Madrid. He used the pen name Tagailog in his writings, mostly is in Spanish language. In his writings, Vogli denounces the mismanagement of the Spanish government in the Philippines and its corrupt practices. Some of his works are La Tertulia Filipina, Noche Buena, Por Madrid, and Impresiones, and others. His strong feelings of love for the country motivated him also to take a military course. He studied signs of war at Germany. Pedro Paterno a scholar, researcher, and novelist, he joined the Fraternity of Mason to promote the existence of reform in the system of governance of the Spanish government in the Philippines. Some of the works he wrote were Ninay, Ami Madre, Sampaguitas e Posillas Varias, Katipunan of his Spanish poems, and others. He was born on February 27, 1858 on a wealthy couple, Don Maximo Paterno and Doña Carmen de Vera Ignacia. He graduated with a Bachelor of Arts from the Ateneo Municipal de Manila and earned honors at his graduation. He continued his studies at Universidad de Salamanca. There he took philosophy and theology courses, then moved to the Central University of Madrid as a poet he was the first Filipino to write an opera in the Filipino language, the Sandugong Panaginip. He became the president of the Congress in Malolos on September 15, 1898. He presided at every meeting and always carried out peaceful diplomacy to have good relations with various political parties. Pascual Poblete He is known as a novelist, poet, and historian. He founded the newspaper El Risumen, El Grito del Pueblo, and Tinig ng Bayan. He was considered the father of the newspaper. He was deported to Africa for his writings on corruption and the oppression of the Spaniards to Filipinos. He only returned to the Philippines when the Americans arrived. He is said to be the first Tagalog translator of results, no limitangere. Some of his works are The Marvelous Life of One Soldado, the Tagalog translation of The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexander Dumas and others. Pascual took his art course from Liceo de Manila. After graduating, Pascual worked and started as a journalist at La Oceana Española, a daily newspaper where he wrote articles and essays for 10 years. Pascual later became the publisher and editor of, of Revisita Popular de Filipinas. Revisita is a weekly newspaper that discusses culture, religion, women, etc. Pascual also founded the first Tagalog newspaper in April 1890, The Catolico Guide. Jose Maria Panganiban He was born in Mambulao, Camarines Norte on February 1, 1863. His parents were Vicente Panganiban of Hagunoy, Bulacan and Juana and Verga from Mauban, Quezon. He is the third of three children to be raised by couple. Although his parents were not from Bicol, it was there that Jose was born and raised. During the height of the propaganda movement in Barcelona, he appreciated the fact that he joined 
the Asociación Hispano-Filipina Organization made up of Filipinos and liberal Spaniards who were active in demanding reforms. He is a publisher of the propaganda movement and wrote some articles in the newspaper La Solidaridad. He used the symbol in the pen name Joe Mapa, JMP, and MP. His first article was titled El Pensamiento, in which he emphasized the freedom of expression that without it, the government would not understand the aspirations of the people. In his other articles, he also criticized the higher education system in the Philippines and called for academic freedom in universities. Pedro Serrano Lactao, he was one of the important personas in masonry who accompanied Antonio Luna to the Philippines intending to develop the masonry. He founded the Lohiyang Nilad, associated with the propaganda movement with aims to have the following. Filipino representative in Spanish court, democratic leadership, freedom and rights of every person, have changes and reforms, the Philippines will become a province of Spain.